How's it going? This is Matt with Smog Tip 3, and we're going to be working on EGRs today. So we got basically five styles of EGRs. I consider five styles. And the two are the most popular, which is the negative back pressure and the positive back pressure. A very hard one to, to do. Too bad today we're not going to do it. And GM uses positive back pressure. Then we have the electronically operated. GM uses that as well. And then we got the new one, VBT. Now that one's a tricky one. People don't understand why you have an EGR monitor when you don't have an EGR. Because you have VBT. And then five, another confusing one, is an EGR electronically EGR with a cooler. And if it's aftermarket, you're going to need an EO number. So why am I telling you about EGRs? Well, basically, in the smog program, you only test 95 and under. So any car before 95 and that does not require a dyno test, a TSI, two-speed idle test, is going to get a functional EGR test if it has an EGR. And they're complicated but easy to understand. Now, take this Mitsubishi to 99, so we, normally it wouldn't be an EGR functional test, but it's a little complicated, complex EGR for the 99. And it has a problem with the EGR system. The EGR monitor is incomplete. So this is a good video for anybody that has a 99 Montero with a 3.5 liter that has a non-complete EGR monitor. And this is a good test. So let's go over the test. So I wrote out the diagram. And basically, Mitsubishi Montero 3.5 EGR testing. So we got port A on the or port B on the throttle body. It's going to send engine vacuum to the back pressure diaphragm, which is going to reduce it down to about 5 psi. It's going to go up to this T point, and it's going to split to the EGR or the EGR solenoid, and then make its way back to to manifold. So when this solenoid, when this is on the off position, and I I filled out the yellow for where the vacuum will go. So when this solenoid is on, it'll, it'll stop the vacuum from the throttle body and then it'll open up the EGR. So let's test it. Since we know the diagram of the EGR system, we can unplug port A and put our finger in and see if the engine wants to stall. Let's give it a shot. So mechanically, mechanically, it's there. EGR flow, it's working, the EGR system. But there's other ways you can test the EGR. Using a mighty pump vacuum pump. Take this big hose off. And take the rubber hose right here. The little rubber hose that goes to the T point. Then a vacuum source. This is 
we know the system's going to run on five vacuum. Let's put this gauge on the manifold. We're going to see if we're getting five vacuum to the EGR itself, which we know we are. is getting a signal, it has flow, and the EGR holds vacuum. But why is it the monitor ready? Why is it still incomplete? As you can see, why is it incomplete? Let's go down to our check engine light, because there's multiple codes on this car. And let's scan. taking its sweet old time. If you saw my OBD2 video before, you know that it takes a, a minute to load. So 18%. We're at 30%. And it's still loading, so I'm just going to tell you that it's the manifold pressure sensor. This is not working as properly. It passed its monitor. It passed, but it's not working. So now it won't see the EGR open, the changes in the vacuum and the combustion or the intake manifold, and that's what C the PCM sees. The intake, va the vacuum, the EGR flow is using the manifold pressure cylinder. So even though it failed, it's in the pending codes. It can't run the monitor until that MAP sensor is good. Until it tells the computer that I'm good. I can, I can run the EGR monitor now. And you'll just drive forever with no check engine light, but no EGR monitor on this car. Okay? So let's go over some of the five styles. I consider five styles. The worst style I consider is the positive back pressure monitor. It is the most complicated, yet easy, if you know what's going on. And um, basically, it uses positive pressure, exhaust positive pressure flow, so it can open the EGR valve. Without the flow, EGR valve doesn't open. You'll get a vacuum signal to it, but when you go to crank on it, with your vacuum gauge, it'll never open. And your keep going, well, it must be defective. But it's not. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. It's just you're not understanding how it opens. So a lot of people put rags in the tailpipe. Someone will put a rag or restriction in the tailpipe and then put the vacuum source and then it should work properly. Another thing you gotta watch out is aftermarket exhaust on that. Without, with more, with a performance exhaust system on a back, uh, a positive back pressure EGR, there won't be any pressure to open the EGR. So that's another thing you gotta watch out. That will fail. Um, VVT is pretty easy. I already explained it. It's computer controlled. There won't be an EGR under the hood. There'll be an EGR monitor, but not under the hood. Another one is uh, electronic, uh, you see this with a lot of diesels, electronic operated with cooler. And this is, if it's aftermarket, it's gonna need an EO number. So just be wary about what you see out there. And then the negative back pressure, the easy, this is based on a negative back pressure. 
And uh, yeah, pretty much we're only doing them on TSI testing. So no dyno, 95 and under, EGR flow test. Signal and flow. Now, there's another tricky one out there. 95 electronic EGRs are really tricky. So just remember that all data is going to help you navigate because they will need to be tested. There's an actual, there's an actual uh, tester out there, but they don't sell it anymore. So you're going to have to do it the old way with a multimeter and a probe. So just let you know, guys. All right. Thanks for watching.